Liftoff. The clock has started. Roger. Welcome to the Good Stuff Morning Show. Here are your hosts, Kyle and Kenny. Good morning, Kenny. Oh, hello. Oh, hi hello you. there. What are you, uh, you're here in the show. I'm back in the show. We're both back in the show. Have we been in the show the whole time? I've been stuck here forever. <laughs> so, she, oh, d- dear listener, you finally, you've let us out of the podcast uh, lamp, and we're here now to do grant three wishes. Uh, oh, ooh, what are your what are your three wishes? I'm They're the genie. I grant the wishes. There's oh, okay. What am I? Am I also a genie? Are, could there be two genies Actually, in one? Ooh. Actually, when we were younger, you were Aladdin, and I was the genie. <sighs> we're gonna bring this for up. Halloween. Okay. Yep. So, so go ahead. I'm Robin Williams as the genie, and you tell me your three wishes. Oh wait, no, Will Smith. Ugh. That definitely has happened in between the last time we did this show and the now time that we're doing the show. Yeah, Genie's been ruined. It's the one thing that we have to talk about <laughs> is are the live action Disney remakes. Uh we've become that show where we talk no. about those things. Um this is weird. This is very strange. We've been what's doing the, what's a, weird. Well, you know, mostly the actually probably just the fact that the whole intro is like it's different. It's a little bit different. It's just a tiny bit different. It's right? just a tiny, yeah, tiny, just tiny bit. Small. But we're bringing it back, bringing back the uh, the old transmission music. And Garko's here. Yeah. Gar- Garko? I don't have. Now you're going to oh, make well, me. Well, now, wait, hold on. You told me Garko was. <laughs> oh, Garko introed us, uh, which was very nice. Thank you, Garko. Uh, what? What? Wait. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Garko? Garko. There we go. Nice. Just you know, gotta grease the gotta grease the wheels a little bit. It's gonna take me a little while to get back into it here <laughs> on. I was relearning this, all of his Q lab keys. This morning zoo program. Oh. That's, That's a awesome. hot dog. Oh. Oh. Gasp. Gasp. Ha. ha. <laughs> all of it's really good and back here on the. On the show. Could I have the Taco Bell instead, please? And this one. This is my toilet TV. Nope. Got to edit that one. <laughs> Got to edit that one to. Say to- toilet. Yep. You know, I can really tell toilet that you're TV. not. Nope. Oh. Got to go back. I can tell that you're at your house by yourself. Toilet. Because yep. you're Perfect. really loud. Got it. Done. And I can hear the walls. <laughs> in your house more uh more prevalent i know i moved and now uh it's every surface is hard and reflective mm. and my you need, you need like that that uh iso foam chamber right where it's on the ceiling the the walls the floor and you're suspended like by nets and by mm. cables mm-hmm. and and then you just talk and you can't you can hear your heartbeat and your in your eardrums and the person on the other side of the wall can hear nothing. I don't know. Is that how it works? It's like, or just put me in the same chamber that they put rocket man in when he's training. Um, <laughs> right. I would like that Harlan as well. Williams. Har- yes. Very good. Yes. Colin. All, th- those are, those are going to be callbacks to the, the original show are we keeping the name is it still just the the good stuff morning show is that like the we're keeping the name the, the oh, same yeah, way yeah. it is do we resume we to keep the name do we resume the numbers does oh you the the, the show the show the episode num- number the episode numbers yeah 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 yeah. Okay. yeah let's keep let's keep that going okay because because technically we've been we've been here the whole time right 
So this one, uh, yes, right. Still connected, still reality. I'm still me. You're still you. Uh, That's true. Mm -hmm. Episode That's true. I'm still me. Episode 412. And wow. It's been, it's been a long road, I, I guess. Is this... We're, we're back in it. This is normal. Everything's normal now. Oh, uh, now we're bored with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> Uh, well, well, why don't we move on to some headlines and we can kind of get something, uh, get something rolling. These are today's headlines. Thank you, oh, thank you. Haroldina. Ooh, good to have you back too. I forgot you were stuck in here with us. Yeah, Garko, Heldina, you, me. You're stuck. Um, everyone's stuck in here now. Everyone's stuck in here. Jennifer Aniston is stuck here. She's right, right here, right. Steve Carell, right next to me, right, right behind me. What you, what you can't see is the last time, the last time we, that we did this show, I didn't have a green screen, and now I have a green screen, and now I just have, I've got the whole cast of of morning show, the the right one, the real one. The, oh the, no, don't call it that. The the one that continued after we ended. Uh, they're they're they all here. They were just carrying the torch. They're with me. We're, we're taking it back. Right. And so now here in the world, in the universe, what I am conjuring up is morning show on Apple TV will no longer exist now that we're back. <laughs> Cancel. Let it. Cancel let today. it be. So let it be podcast. So let it be done. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kyle Moses. Um, actually, speaking of Apple, Apple, in, in fact, on Monday announced that uh, lossless Apple Music is coming in June. I mean, you gotta wait a little bit, but it's not gonna, it, they're gonna include it in the member price. So they're not gonna add like a hi-fi tier like uh, Spotify is rumored to have, or is rumored to do. So you think that they're getting ahead of the whole Spotify thing? Definitely. Oh, well, uh, I think that Apple has had this in the works for a little while. And because it, it was rumored I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago, but nowhere near like Spotify's run up to this. It Spotify's had had the rumors floating for like a year and they still don't have anything to show for it. Um, but a Apple Music is like, no, nah, we're going to have tangible evidence that we have this and hey, it's not going to cost you anything extra. So. All right. Uh, life continues. Obviously, we've been bouncing back and forth between music streaming services and now again i'm questioning reality and trying to decide do i go back to apple music should i jump back on board and use all this good good starlink bandwidth that i now have <laughs> at my very echoey location to stream cd quality music which Probably, I would I would assume most like songs can handle because well, okay. most of these most of these places that require you to upload to streaming services are like give us a wave file, give us the like CD quality thing that the mastering folks are mm -hmm. they made and you send it over and that's yeah. that's I guess and then we'll compress the heck out of it yeah. Which is good. Great. I. You think people can tell the difference? Really? I don't. I don't think that the average consumer will be able to tell much of a difference. But there's enough uh, clientele. There's enough of a user base that has wanted non MP3 files, yeah. non compressed files to populate their streaming service because they're still holding on to like a massive, you know, multi terabyte library because it's all CD quality or all rips from, mm -hmm. you know, all a bunch mm -hmm. of masters or something like that, mm -hmm. um, that they will not get rid of because no streaming service or very few streaming services are offering, um, lossless or what they consider lossless. Uh, what Apple music though is also doing in this is, <clears throat> they're offering uh, Atmos or spatial audio mm -hmm. for the Apple Music uh, tracks that they're that they're now going to have in Hi-Fi um, that you can use your AirPods with. 
which is great. You can use the spatial audio. I don't know if you've tried it yet with your iPhone or your iPad or anything like that, but it's it's kind of wild. You can watch it with like the Apple TV movies or anything you have on iTunes. I think any movie you can use the the spatial audio with your AirPods, and it's 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 good. I I I don't know how else to explain it because it's it's a uh, personal experience. But the downside to what Apple Music is doing with this is that you won't be able to actually listen to the lossless version of the track with your AirPods. So let me let me let me kind of clear that up. How wait, you can listen to the the, spatial audio. uh Uh-huh. You can listen to like the Atmos, oh, it's all around me. Sure. Multi, you know, 5.1, 7.1 channel. Oh, it's all around me. Cool. Uh Uh-huh. But it won't be the lossless. It won't be like the super high tier. Well, but okay. But is that a limitation on Bluetooth and like sending stuff through through Bluetooth, I would guess? I think so. I think it's whatever that they're using with their um with the chips that they have in the AirPods to connect to your iPhone, I don't think that it has the capacity. Right. It's just it's too much too much bandwidth going through the the phone to your Bluetooth speakers. I However, think though, though Oh, go ahead. The connection here. And the reason for doing this has got to be to try and market their home pods as hi fi music devices and use those as no, why you're shaking 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 your head furiously. Because it also came out that the home pod won't do the lossless. What? If I recall, if I recall correctly, let me. Let me double, triple, quadruple check now on this that. Now, this is, wait, back to the going. <gasps> Gasp. I'm surprised. Gasp. Wow. Su- so I'm surprised. I'm surprised. There's a, always a sound for surprise. Surprised. Home. So this is from MacRumors.com. HomePod will support spatial audio for Apple Music, but not lossless audio. Again, I think it's because um, whatever they're using to connect. Well, but that no, but it would be a straight source. It would just be Wi-Fi to connect to the HomePod. Yeah, maybe it's the speakers. Maybe the drivers just don't have the seems silly. capability. It seems silly. I don't know. I think the actual push is to get people to listen to their Apple Music on their um, Apple TV. I think that through the, the TV, through the TV speakers potentially through your through your home receiver, like through the TV. What um, you're doing, though, what you're doing now theater setup. is we've gone through all of the capable devices. Why listen to lossless audio through the speaker on your phone? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Why listen to lossless audio through Bluetooth, through your AirPods with the frequency response that it has? Nobody cares. Doesn't matter for which is why it's not extra cost. So, therein lies therein lies the balance that they have tried to achieve here. It's a feature that maybe not everyone is going to be able to use at all. But you're not paying extra for it, so it's there. You can upgrade your equipment to then utilize it. Mm. You are already a subscriber. Mm. Or if you're not an Apple Music subscriber yet, but you have the equipment or you have the means to listen to it lossless, you're like, well, I'm definitely going to jump on it now. So... Here, here's what I'm proposing. We, you and I, lead the lossless podcast revolution and only, <laughs> only export dot wave files at 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz, just gigabytes to download. Just a, a gigantic file. You know why? Oh, yeah. you got to no, You no. got to get this good frequency response. In. We're going we're going 24 bit at 48 K. OK, we're going all the way. All the- <laughs> we're no, we're going we're going 91, no, 90, 96.1. <laughs> all. The, yep. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. 90, 96, 24 bit. I mean, <laughs> Why not? Right. I'll get in touch with Transistor. We'll see if we can get those files uploaded and how how much they like what tier that puts us at in terms of the uh, bandwidth. Yeah. Each episode clocks in at about five gigs. All we have to do at that point is reduce. (laughs) We just got to reduce the number of listeners. We can only support five listeners at this point. So (laughs) 
if you want to be a listener to this podcast, you <laughs> there will be a Patreon tier that is just high resolution audio only, uh, five gigs of file. We will put it on a flash drive and mail it to you. <laughs> That's the only way to really get it to you. We will release every single episode as its own album on Apple Music. <laughs> And we'll record in 5.1. Now, see, we we were brainstorming. We were brainstorming before this show started. Patreon.com slash good stuff. You could just release each of these segments as its own track and then just skip it. If you don't, if you don't like this part, you don't want to listen to me talk right now. Tough. You're about to hear me a lot this episode. I'm half of the, you know, what's happening here. But... You can skip it. You 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 skip it. Yeah, uh, that's still an idea. You you, you skip it. You um, I don't have that one in Kyle's, here. He's searching. You're searching. Yeah, do it. Well, let me just add really quick to the end of this story, um, because we're, we're I mean, we are kind of Apple fanboys. Wow. When they speak when for they, yourself. When, <laughs> I am definitely. Uh, but when they announce new things like this, new features. Yeah, it's, it always it always like gets super hyped, and then it kind of. I don't out. know about you, but Amazon, I'm, I'm, I'm Amazon. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Jump on mm-hmm. it. Yep. Yeah, Amazon is gonna is also gonna go to the included at no cost route for their lossless audio. I don't know when that's actually gonna launch. They ship it to you. This. That's oh. that's the only way this works, right? <laughs> Now, see, it, that's another it's play. It's prime. Yeah, it's prime. That is another play. It's either TV based or it's like, you know, Amazon Echo based. That hmm. makes sense. Uh, they did. Let's see. They announced it in fall of 2019. The Amazon Music HD 50 million yes. songs stream in quote unquote HD uh, HD audio 16 bits. Ugh. 44.1 kilohertz around CD quality. Which is fine, right? So now what? We're entering the age of ultra HD audio. I don't, I don't like. I like, don't like that term no, HD audio. No, I don't either. That's that is definitely the uh, appeal to the most consumers possible term, right? Sure. It, Which it, why would HD DVD die? Why did the HD DVD? I mean, it's a lot of D's that I just put in the mm-hmm. term, but Blu-ray. Really? Blu-ray beat HD DVD? Who added the lasers? I had a lot of HD DVDs that I could play on my Xbox 360 attachment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had an HD DVD drive. And they didn't you couldn't even play games what? on it. You could only play the the <laughs> the maroon disc. Yeah. Oh, it was I, maroon. Yeah, that was the difference. Yeah, it was had, the red one or the blue one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I had like King Kong and the Matrix. Just and, just so you're uh, aware, those still exist. They're in storage over here. I've got them. <laughs> Which what? I don't have an Xbox. I'm sure every every Xbox 360 that has ever existed has now red ringed to death. Likely, yes, mine did as well. So I actually did just find out or find my HDMI cable that mm. I uh, that I got with the first H. Or sorry, Xbox 360 Elite. Right, which had the HDMI. That was, it was not the... Which was the mm-hmm. first console to have the HDMI right. on it. Yeah. Yep. Well, no, not the first Xbox to have the HDMI. So are we, anyway. are, we, are we going Amazon or are we going Apple or are we waiting for Spotify? See, I follow you... <laughs> Wait, hold on a into- second. Why are you asking the question? Because <laughs> I already know the answer for both of us. It's Spotify, isn't it? No, it's Apple. Are we sticking with Apple? We're going to Apple? I'm sticking with Apple. Why then are, well, we'll have to, we'll look at the budgets later. We'll figure out what's going on here because apparently <laughs> I still have an account with, with Spotify and it's attached to yours. We've got to, we need to figure this out. Shh, Why don't is tell this anybody ha- Spotify is listening. Uh, we're in this, well, we're in the, we're in the same house. Well, look at you. You're right over here next to me. Hi. Oh, hello. High five. That's. You made you made a high five self with your mouth, and you could just clap your hands together. What? <sighs> Point taken. Let's, let's move on to this next story. I just want to cover this really quick. In the time that we've been stuck in this podcast, SpaceX has gone. I almost said nuclear. 
and then well, I almost went, and then I almost said ballistic. Mm. And those those are both weapon terms, and they're not making a weapon. They're making rockets that you know of that fly into outer space, and they've been testing the uh, spaceship. Is it a spaceship? Right. Yes. Uh, SN fifteen is the SN fifteen was the most recent mm-hmm. prototype that they've tested, mm-hmm. which did launch and achieved. I think I think they went to ten kilometers. And then it floated down and then it landed. I think they just call it this. Just like the Falcon. Yeah, I think rocket. it's just called the Starship. Oh, Starship. Yeah. That's right. Starship. Yeah. So SpaceX, uh, I'm putting this big quotes, secured a contract from NASA to put people on the moon again. And I think the date that they're looking at is 2024. That's kind of lofty, but uh, three years from now, who knows? Considering the the clip that SpaceX is doing tests, it, it might happen. Who knows? But the next test for this 2024 moon trip that SpaceX needs to conduct is to get their uh, their super heavy rocket in conjunction with the Starship prototype and get that to test and uh, not probably not land it. Well, what they're doing is they're going to land it in the water. Hmm. Hmm. I was expecting a, a more, I, I don't know, joyous or a surprise. Uh, surprise. Surprise. Got that one. I've, I've so this, got, this is uh, from, I've got, um, okay. yeah, got that one. I've got, uh, Yee-haw! got that That's a good one. one. Yeah. Let's use that one for a space. Okay. Uh, so approximately 169 seconds into the flight, the super heavy booster will shut down. But instead of returning to Boca Chica, Texas, which is where it's going to launch from, the booster will perform a, quote, partial return and land in the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 20 miles from shore. The nature of the landing wasn't specified, but it'll probably involve a splashdown in the ocean. I would would guess that as well. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is definitely a let's measure um, the takeoff and let's measure reentry. Right. That's that's kind of their their goal is to get a bunch of data on those those aspects Hmm. the starship then which will detach from the super heavy booster will i think do i don't know how many revolutions around or how many orbits around the earth but then it'll actually come down uh close to hawaii or Kauai, um and that'll be about 90 minutes into the uh into the launch so or, or i should say the whole thing shouldn't last more than 90 minutes but wow so they're they're going they're like ramping it yeah. up now they're not going 10 kilometers they're going around the world yeah. and it's gonna look way different than the other launches have looked so far which i'm excited oh, for. for sure um and the 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 scale though so when you see the spacex when you see like the falcon 9 mm-hmm. launches launching kyle's starlink satellites into the uh into orbit those i mean those are big but they're not they're not that big right they're uh, 50 feet like 20, 20 meters, something like that. I don't know anything um, about the size of the rockets. <laughs> well, they're big, but they're not like super massive or anything like that. The Starship is is so like it's so big. It's so it, it's unbelievable. You watch the videos and you're like, oh, look, it's like a big cylinder. No, 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 no. That thing is like a football field. How, how times a thousand? How many bananas? A <laughs> hundred million. A hundred no, million. I'm going to get the actual. Uh, dimensions here space of, it, of a banana of a banana it's gonna look it's it's gonna be massive how many uh, how many do you think you could fit starship. inside <laughs> i don't know okay so the overview of the entire uh starship plus super heavy booster is 120 meters tall so it is football field plus football field football field plus both touchdowns or end zones. Okay. Yeah. Nine right. meters in diameter. So a, a first down. And uh, that thing's going to launch into the air and it's going to, I don't, I just, it's so hard to, to uh, imagine and fathom this thing because they're, like I said, they're going at such a clip. They're, they're just launching these things like once every two weeks or something like that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and things are moving so fast it's the future already we've been in we've been in this podcast for too long i know look at us we we this is the first time we've read news 
since <laughs> since we we did this podcast last time. This is the this is the first time we're hearing What's about TikTok? it. What is it? I haven't heard, it's the, what the clock does. Oh right, that's right. It's yeah. that song by that one girl in 2010. Oh, we weren't. That's way too early. You got to go back. You got more right forward. How is she not the face of TikTok? How is that not like the anthem of the app? Well, the face of TikTok is actually a literal watch. That's the face tick, of talk, face. Tick tock, ticky, ticky, tock, tock, tick tock. I don't know. I don't know really. Know the You're song. gonna. We're gonna get a DMCA takedown <laughs> notice here inside the podcast, <laughs> especially because this has been uploaded directly to Apple Music now and. <laughs> You're listening to it in lossless audio. All right. I'm excited. Those are your your headlines. Oh, thank you so much. It's time for us to move on to uh, another segment, and I don't necessarily know how to get into this segment. But Kenny, today's special, which was another podcast we did in the between times, is National Cheese Souffle Day. Didn't we have a stinger for this? Didn't we have like a, oh, a yeah. bumper for this? Yeah. Do we need a full theme song? I, I feel like we had a thing. Didn't we have a thing? Kyle's doing some. some. Uh... I don't have it. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. It's I not, knew we had one. It's not but here. We, but we can definitely, we'll add it in post right now. Cool. Thanks for the intro. Uh, today's. Yeah, today's special is National Cheese Souffle Day. And the word souffle is the past participle of the French verb souffle, which means to blow up or more loosely puff up. So like, uh, that's exactly what it does. It's like when the Starship prototype explodes <laughs> on reentry. Eat it and uh, it explodes in your mouth. That's right. And it, it's what happens to the combination of custard and egg whites. Right. So it kind of puffs up. The first recipe for souffle actually appeared in the, here we go, here we go, here's my French. Vincent Lachapelle's Le Cuisinaire Moderne. I like it. Personally, that's a, that's a pretty good one. I never took any French ever in high school or college. So, and nor, neither did I. Nor have, <laughs> nor, nor have I been to any uh, French speaking locations i've only eaten souffles i've only uh, eaten fries but that appeared in 1742 so this, hmm. is, this is old this is an old recipe Ugh. you can only use you can only use 18th century uh ingredients now we're talking about souffles cheese. in general or cheese souffles it's the cheese it's cheese it's souffle the che- day it's the cheese right yeah okay. but i do want to cover the guinness book Oh, I uh, got to know for I the largest know. souffle. Yep. It was in the Palestinian town of Nablus and it weighed, here we go, 3,891 pounds and was 243 feet long. And it was consumed in 10 minutes. By one person? <laughs> Toilet. <laughs> they just flushed it. <laughs> It took 10 minutes to flush. Holy cow. That is a lot. Uh, That's so wait, it was it it was a long souffle? I think I definitely I'm think it was like one of those I'm imagining like a gutter but filled with souffle. <laughs> oh, I have no idea how they puffed it up that much though. Uh, 243 feet long. I think weighed nearly 2 tons. Do you that's so many How eggs. do you even cook it? How do you even cook it? Does it go in an oven? Is it uh, a, you can't. There's no oven that that's, that's big like no, that. No, you, you, you cook it in sections. You know, like a, like a rolling pizza oven at a Domino's that just has a, like a, a thing that just a constant, conveyor? Yeah, the conveyor. Or like a, 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 a Quiznos. It's Quiznos, right? It's just a Quiznos <laughs> toaster. <laughs> With a gutter, 250 feet long. With a gutter filled <laughs> with cheese souffle, cooking it slow, slowly, and then and it's could, only good for ten minutes. <laughs> would you can? Yeah, you. I guess it would be cold by the time it was done. That's just so long. It's it's such a long souffle. No, see, it's not. It's not the Quiznos uh, baking conveyor belt. 
it's like one of those asphalt makers when they're making new pavement and it and it we consumes were, like we the were, rocks and the tar yep. and then it just spits out cheese souffle cheese souffle on the other end yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the stinkiest drink possible i think that would be it right like that's the just yeah. just a cup full of asphalt tarmac souffle yep the the now what i'm trying to unpack here <laughs> with the guinness world record for souffles is it which part of this is the guinness world record is it that it weighed 3891 pounds or is it that it was 243 feet long or <laughs> is it that it was consumed in 10 minutes it was definitely the 10 minutes because no one's been able to eat a souffle. You just in can't. A shorter of time. You just can't eat it. No matter what size the souffle is, it's impossible to eat <laughs> in less than 10 <laughs> minutes. Yes. The, <laughs> even if you had a friend help you, <laughs> it would it's, somehow take longer well, than 10 minutes. It's like it's entropy. It just is a souffle <laughs> and it can only be more than 10 minutes at all times. Uh, no, I just think it's, it's the, uh, the mass, like the, it's just a massive souffle. How many eggs is that? Okay. Well, let's look at the Alton Brown cheese souffle recipe and multiply and and multiply. Yeah. Get your calculator out. That has gotta be a ton of eggs. Okay. So this, uh, this recipe yields five servings and it uses four eggs. Hmm. So almost a one to one for serving and eggs. Yeah. Now, if we wanted, to, so I'm looking at the size of this thing, and it's maybe in a five six inch di- uh, dish. So if you multiplied uh, two forty three by two, you'd probably get the amount of dishes. That this would be, and then you multiply that number by four. Are you got your calculator? I'm not. I'm absolutely. I'm just staring into space right now. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> okay, well, guess what I'm doing? I'm pulling up my calculator on my iPhone. Why don't you okay, just have? What did I like say? Two forty three like times you, two times four equals one thousand nine hundred forty four. At least that many eggs. At least two thousand eggs went into that thing. I wanted it to be a more ridiculous number, to be honest with you. I thought maybe it would be more like six figure eggs, you know? (laughs) Well, I mean, but again, that's just as big as this dish. But like you said, it goes into a Quiznos oven Mm -hmm. for 243 feet. It's the dish is probably way bigger than that. And it probably I'm I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess 30,000 eggs. When was the last time you went to a Quiznos? <laughs> I feel like you're, you're you're quizzing me, but it feels it I'm quizzing you. you it feels, actually, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> it feels kind of judgy. Like, excuse me, <laughs> sir. Please, uh, no, excuse me. When was the last time you went to a Quiznos? Uh, actually, you know what? I think the last time I went to a Quiznos, uh, my wife was pregnant. I know that. And we got our favorite sandwich, which was the chicken carbonara on the rosemary bread. And the fact that you remember the order, I think, speaks volumes. Well, that to... was the order that we always got in college. Mm, and we went to it. and she she was craving it. Right. She was pregnant. So she was craving it. And we got it. And she ate half the sandwich when we were at the restaurant. And she brought back the last half of the sandwich. And she had it, she brought it home and she put it on the table next to the couch. And she, I think she went to the restroom. And when she came back, the dog had eaten the sandwich. The, the whole of the sandwich. The rest of the sandwich. That's really and, unfortunate. Wow. And I don't think that we've ever gone back because she was so upset. I don't know if she's going to appreciate me telling that story, but no, she'll probably, it happened. You'll, you're on the hook now to get a, to get a Quizno sandwich. I must remedy. I must remedy the situation. I must create a, a positive memory as the last time we've been to Quiznos. Yes. It's the only way to rectify it. It's the only way to free you from your podcast bottle. Mm-hmm. Your, your ship now inside the bottle. Right. Sailing. Right. We, we will include this, this Alton Brown cheese souffle 
uh, recipe in the show notes. We will definitely not include the recipe that they used to create the record breaking souffle, though. I don't know. We don't know how they did it. You need like 100 million eggs or something. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's more. Yeah. That's a more believable number. That's for right. Me. That's yeah. that's 11 figure. Wait. 100 million. No. That's, what do you think? What do you think? The, what do you think the biggest nine? What do you what do you think the biggest egg salad sandwich was? <laughs> Are you going to ask Google? No, I just want I want to I just want to pontificate sort of Did on you this say egg salad. Yeah. So like a like egg salad. Is that a thing? Egg salad? Egg salad sandwich? Egg salad. It's like a, like, yeah, like hard boiled eggs chopped up mixed with mayonnaise. You can't really, oh my gosh, you can't really, you can see my face, right? It's disgust. You you know mayonnaise? You know that good, good <laughs> egg, just sort of saucy kind of emulsifying <laughs> thing? You know that? Mushy, yellow. It is eggs in itself. So it's. Just sort of thinking, oh, so it's even thinking more. through it now. It's a lot of eggs. It's it's so way more eggs. Call, so when you're saying that egg salad has mayonnaise in it, what you really are saying is egg salad has eggs in it plus an egg sauce. Yes. Okay, that's disgusting. Eggs two if, ways. If I mean, I don't like saying the word mayonnaise because I don't like mayonnaise, but calling it egg sauce. Actually, no, I'm going to call it egg sauce from now on. Mm-hmm. It's gross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Egg sauce. Mm-hmm. That means it's time to move on to. I guess I do have a theme song for this, but I don't know where to stop it, so we're just going to do it anyway. That's time for midnight snack. That's what I got. <laughs> Gold Belly is selling a Cheez It birthday cake made from an entire box of crackers. Well, like a family size box or like a snack size are box? You tr- are you what, trying? Are you, how big? Are you trying to shame me right now? <laughs> well, let's open the. Let me let me look at this this photo. If you consider yourself a true cheese it lover, then this news is definitely just for you. You yourself. Though the brand has already given us big and tasty news like the loaded popcorn and dual box with wine in honor of their upcoming birthday, the Kellogg brand, which turns 100 this year, is celebrating their big day with a truly special treat, a birthday cake made completely from Cheez-It crackers. Okay, I'm looking at this cake. Uh, First of all, it's like a a variety of the Cheez-It flavors. That they have here. Um, how are they? What are, what are they doing to make the frosting? Did they really grind up some Cheez-Its. And use some food coloring. And make cheese it frosting? Or did they just top it with a bunch of Cheez-Its. And it's just regular cake? Unsure. Which is why we need to spend $49. To get the Cheez-It cheese centennial cake. Oh no no no. It's, no, a, no, it's, no. it's available today. That's so expensive. Through May 20th. Mm. Um, Actually, that was yesterday. Well, okay. So now you're 17. Uh huh. Now we're in time. You know that podcasts work in the way that people can listen to them whenever they want. And so, really, now we've got to talk about every day on the Gregorian (laughs) calendar. You know that? (laughs) That's what I've been doing for the last two years sitting inside this podcast. (laughs) I've just been. I've just been telling you all about dates. We've been stuck here eating an advent calendar's worth of Cheez-Its. Just every day's a single Cheez-It. That's all we that's all we've sustained ourselves on. That is my daughter. My daughter likes Cheez-Its. Oh, one of the good ones. I knew it. <laughs> but but after a while, I kind of get talk tired to me. Of can, she, can she talk to me about her favorite Cheez-It flavor? Because I got to know. Uh, Cheese. Okay, listen. Flavor? So what? you know that they're what? you know you look. Just look at the cheese it cheese and tennial cake. You can see the number of different cheese it flavors. Yeah, some of those things look like a trisket. It's a little it, yeah, I I'm gonna guess that maybe one of these cheese it's is sweet, which would be weird to me. Ugh. But you've got it you have to, you have to if you, if you have not tried this yet. The cheese it extra toasty. Cheez-Its are uh-huh. spectacular. Is that, so okay? So that would you would consider that a different flavor than just a regular Cheez-It? Do the taste buds do a different dance 
when they get the cheese it on it? <laughs> if the answer is yes, then it's a different flavor. Okay, if I, if I feel right, a right. different way about a particular is cheese, that like, it, is that like getting my in and out fries well done? Is it like toasty cheese it's? It's extra time in the in the cheese it chamber. Yeah, oh, the cheese it chamber. Okay. Well, no, she has not tried those. She's only had the default flavor. Hmm. She has she has not uh, in app purchased any extra cheese it flavors. Any from perks? The- hasn't transmogged <laughs> the cheese it yet. Okay. Definitely no. Definitely have only bought the base model cheese it. Hmm. I I'd recommend now. The other alternative, and I, I would agree that this is not a different flavor. It is a different format. There is Big Cheez-It, which is Cheez-It, but big. Is it like a graham cracker size? Yes. Oh, my. Just imagine imagine like a roof tile sized <laughs> Cheez-It. You know? Yeah, they, they, I, st- I can. They, they stack them sideways in the box and they only fit a couple. <laughs> It, it's no, they sell them next to the tortillas where you and buy stack, a dozen tortillas, right? But it's a, it's a stack of cheese. It's the do, size of a, of a record. They do have those though for like cocoa puffs and stuff, right? We, we, I, we've, we've seen Wait, those. What? We have seen those. No, they're the size of golf balls, but they're cocoa puffs. Absolutely. It's Wait the, a second. It's, it's like buying. Not mini wheats, but like regular wheat cereal where it's massive and double you have like wheat. four in your cereal bowl. Yeah, the double wheat cereal. It's the you put a literal hay bale inside the bowl. <laughs> the Edward drink. It's at Starbucks and it's gone viral. What's the Edward drink? Is it sparkly and a vampire? Nope. Good guess. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you one more chance. Okay, well, I already scrolled down through the story, and I, I want to read it. Can I read it? Yeah, let's. Okay, okay, let's do this. Let's, you know, actually, let's, let's set the scene. I'm going to order this in the drive-thru at a Starbucks. And Are you ready? scene. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Pulling up my car. Roll the window down. It's a crank. Man, they're taking forever to take my order. You're gonna, you're gonna make me, you're gonna make Kyle. Me. You're at the Starbucks. Could I have the Taco Bell instead, please? <laughs> no, you are the Starbucks employee in this situation. Stop being resistant. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Can I? I'm starting I the bit again. I know. I'm, try- <laughs> I'm rolling my window back up so I can do the bit again. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hello. Are you are you there? This is the worst customer service ever. <laughs> Hi. Yes. <laughs> this guy doesn't even know who I am. All right. Hold, hold on. I'm trying to. I'm trying to put my. I'm trying to get like. Okay. We'll do it like this. There you go. Welcome to Starbucks, home of Starbucks. Can I take your order? Oh, good burger changed. Um, hi, yeah, my name's Edward. I'm going to order a drink. Uh, can I get a... No, stop. Vent- stop right there. I already know what you need. Well, let me tell you we anyway. We have... No, sir, please stop. Please don't talk when I'm talking to you. Here we go. I- a venti caramel crunch frap with... I need to put my glasses on to read this because it's so far away. Five banana, uh, extra caramel drizzle, extra whip, extra ice, extra cinnamon, dull top... Uh, seven pumps added of dark caramel sauce, extra caramel crunch, one pump honey blend, extra uh, slotted broom batter. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, I don't <laughs> Five mean to pumps of frap sorry. rest coffee. <laughs> I need seven added frap chips. I need heavy cream and I want it double blended, please. And I am coming to the window in five seconds. Hope you have my Edward drink. Sorry, I was I was sort of doing something else. What'd you say? <laughs> I've driven off already. My goodness. Do do you Edward, think what are you doing to your life? Well, he said on today's episode of the post that got me fired. Uh do you think that was this tweet from Josie? Ah. 
do you think that this would taste good is really what it comes down to five, no. but it has five bananas. It's just going to taste like bananas and maybe a little bit of caramel. What's but the problem? Like all bananas. What's How, okay. I know you like your bananas and you like your frozen bananas, mm-hmm. but I've got one in the freezer right now. Then why, then why the heck are you adding all of this other stuff, but not just like extra this extra that it's like seven pumps of this and five pumps of this and seven chips. Why? Did he try six chips once? And yeah, like, you know, what? I need that's what I see chip. you. You and I go to the same place. The the recipe testing that was involved in the creation of this beverage, which is why it's called the Edward drink. Because this is definitely not the first time. Absolutely not. The the day where you found out that two bananas wasn't enough and you needed five. <laughs> um, well, no, it's more likely the day that you went to six bananas. You're like. This is far too many too bananas. Too many bananas. Absolutely. <laughs> Just gums it up. Double blended sounds like a must, though, right? Because there's no way that you would be able to get this through a straw if it was not just run through a cement mixer and on the other end is a like PVC sprinkler pipe size drinking vessel. Ugh. That's what I'm thinking. That's the only way to, to get this beverage into that's your, how they, that's in fact that that's what comes out of the Starbucks window. Just a cement mixer with the PVC pipe up at the <laughs> just, other end. Just kind of like <laughs> after you scan your Starbucks card, by the way, it is, it is reusable for, because it is, you know, Straws are banned here in California now. So now we've we've resulted. Straws are banned. Mm-hmm. Yep. We've. Uh, I bring my own. I can't tell you how many times uh, I have been offered a straw to add to a Starbucks drink that has those new like sippy lids. And someone asks if you want the straw. They're like, do you want a straw? I'm like, no, you gave me it. it I can drink it now. Sir, no, the Edward, the Edward you have to have with a straw. There's no other way. Luke, I am your father. Uh, Sir, that's where the sixth banana is. We hollow out a full banana. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. (laughs) You use the, you use the, you're making yourself laugh way too much at that. I don't appreciate that very much at all. Hollow out a banana. (laughs) <laughs> Hollow out a frozen banana and use it as the straw. Yeah, except I've seen a viral video of somebody who used like a toilet paper roll, like oh, an empty I've toilet paper a, roll toilet. to drink a cup of milk. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I can do this so fast. And it because because you're getting a full cup of milk in, in like 0.1 seconds. Your body doesn't know what to do with it, and it comes out of every orifice in your face. Right. Like the Guinness guy, who I'm sure you remember this from your childhood, who watched an episode of Guinness World Records where the guy squirts milk out of his eyeball. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. He, like, he like squeezes his eye. He's like, squirt. And the, whole, the whole family who can turn their eyelids upside, upside down, you know, whatever, inside out. Or the person who can like poke their eyes out of yeah, the socket. Yeah, that's the that's the one I'm talking about. The 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 whole the whole fam was on and they everybody could do it. Yeah, man, that was like peak 1998. Ooh, speaking of peak 1998, oh. Tricks yogurt is coming back and my 90s heart can barely take it. Wait, did Tricks yogurt go away? We just stopped buying it. We stopped having a, a 3-year-old around. I'm about to have a 3-year-old around. Maybe I'm going to get this for me, for you. Yeah, absolutely. For absolutely. For you. They were swirled. That was the thing I liked about them. Two flavors yeah. in the same vessel. Right. Well, flavors put that in quotes flavor. It was sh- sugar What's with you in flavors. Are you what you're having? A- you're definitely referencing the pre-show. <laughs> it's fair. Yeah, you just you seem to have. Well, you were. I you, said you I were, said that Chinese Skittles are better than American Skittles. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Skittles. Ooh, sorry, Kyle. 
I was actually thinking more about like the fact that you just haven't tried any other flavor of cheese it, which now, <laughs> oh, yeah, that, now that's I'm true. thinking we need a cheese it flight and we need to work our way all we the way. We should do it on a plane. All of the, the cheese it flight, the cheese it flight flight. Do you think I would have to fill an entire carry on luggage with the box of cheese it's <laughs> all of the cheese it's flavors. I can't, would I can't they, imagine what that TSA would the TSA search would look agent like. pull us aside and say, sir, are these your Cheez-Its? And would, what would we do? Would we have to explain ourselves? The very first thing, if I was the TSA agent, I would say, sir, are these your Cheez-Its? And may I, please may have, I have all some, of them? please. <laughs> yeah. I'd like the extra toasty box. I need to, I need to put this all in evidence. And when I say evidence, I mean my mouth. And when I mean my mouth, I mean I'm going to eat them. I mean the garbage can. And I mean goodbye. And they just leave. And then they run. You think that that's worth leaving your job at the TSA <laughs> for cheese? A full A luggage full, full of <laughs> free cheeses. What? Who knows? I think luggage is being too conspicuous. I think we okay. we would need a bright orange we- briefcase. That's handcuffed. That's to that's you. not conspicuous. Not at all. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. I was going to suggest we purchase clothing where we can layer like sheets of Cheez-Its inside the linings of our pockets of our trench coat. So one Cheez-It just like square sewn in to a little pocket. No, no, no. I'm saying it's like all it's like. Like chain mail of Cheez-Its. Okay. That's where I'm headed. We'd have to be. Yeah. I mean, you'd get through the metal detector because they're, I mean, I guess that would be the time to learn that Cheez-Its have metal in them, but. (laughs) Wait, what? Hmm. Well, okay. I, I think you should get this. I think you need to try it. I think you need to taste the flavor of, of the tricks rabbit. And then you need to decide if it is still good or not. Yeah, I would definitely have to tap into that, like, again, 1998, 1997 yeah. uh, sense memory of, mm-hmm. of what I remember Trix yogurt tasting like, and then and then match it to, uh, and I definitely have to bring my daughter to the store when I buy it, right? To make it seem not like an adult man is purchasing a case of Trix yogurt. Why not? It's for her, I promise. As Don't, I'm peeling the lid off and you, eating it in the store. Yep. I'm just taste testing it. It's, it's for her. The fact that you're even like m- like miming that you have a spoon in your hand for this in the store is generous. You know <laughs> that all you're you doing. You know I'm going to be using a toilet paper roll. Just a hollowed out banana right into, right into the yogurt. The size of those cups is definitely like they're shallow enough. You could take the whole tongue and go just kind of around the edge and just one, one the, big The time gulp. I feel the most like a giraffe. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You don't slap your watermelon. You should. <laughs> Again, you sound judgy. <laughs> Wait, hold, hold, hold the phone. You don't slap your watermelon. Well, have you ever bought a watermelon and invested all your hopes and dreams of a sweet and juicy fruit future? Fruiture. I'm fruiture. I'm definitely. That is definitely a a company name (laughs) that we will sell to the highest bidder. Uh, Who's making the future? We we only invest in square watermelons. Yep. Only to cut it open and find a flavorless, potentially mushy disappointment. Me too. One too many times. As with all things, selecting a better watermelon improves with each try and practice. Next time you go shopping for this fruit, use these visual and physical cues to help you pick the ripest, sweetest, juiciest watermelon. So let me, I'm not, okay, I promise I'm not looking at the article. I promise I have not clicked on it. I promise that I have not seen it before. I'm going to guess that the visual cues all are. All you're, all you're telling me is that you didn't prepare for the show, which is great. Thank you. Appreciate that. I didn't, Very good. I didn't look at this one. Nothing's changed. Sure. Absolutely nothing. 
let me see if I can guess what the signs are. All right, tell me. Dark color. Well, hold on. Now, hold on. I've got to now search for it. Uh, 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 okay. Like yeah. a deeper green. Okay. Uh-huh. You want, you want um, like seams, right? Like crack, not cracks, but like seams in the watermelon where it's like overstretched. Um, and you don't want it to sound hollow. Is that correct? You. It's. Am I correct or am I wrong? It, it, you are very wrong. Okay. So from the, from the slapping side of things, uh-huh. um, you give it a, a, you give it a little gentle slap or tap. If it's a dull muted thudding sound, uh-huh. put it back. Oh, you do want it to sound hollow. This kind of deadened sound usually means the rind is very thick and the melon has less of a refreshingly juicy red flesh to chomp down on. Okay, that sounds weird. Alternatively, if you okay. hear a crisp, resonant, hollow smack and feel a subtle rebounding clap back, you're a winner. Okay. What else? Uh, what are the other visual cues you, that you mentioned before? You should spot the golden field spot, which is basically like a mustardy yellow spot. It it's, means it's good. It's it's where it rested once it was on the vine on okay. on the ground. Okay. Uh, it means uh, if it's white, it means that it didn't get enough sun. But if it is okay, uh, daisy yellow. Uh, those those are the field spots. So it made contact okay. with the ground while it was growing. Okay, keep c- continue. Uh, look for rich colors. So somewhat correct on the colors. Thank the you. Side yes, not darker. You said darker, which is I like meant like deeper green. Rich. Okay, richer. I, Ooh, iPhone richer. twelve colored watermelons. Ooh, richer the third. Ooh. Uh, and then you check the stem. So one quick visual cue to check for ripeness is to examine the stem of a melon. Look for a dried, desiccated brown tail. The smaller, the better. This is a good. That's what I look for all the time. Uh-huh. Not just the uh-huh. This is a good clue that the melon has ripened on the vine. And was uh, ready to detach from the plant on its own instead of versus like a, a green, like a like a green, yeah, like a green stem. I was, almost said almost said fleshy, but like healthy looking green. Yeah, it, right? it means well. Yes, it's like if if the umbilical cord is still connected to the the baby watermelon. Kyle, no, you you know you you know that it uh, it still needed to kind of uh, grow and ripen before you before you oh, you snipped it. Good lord! You know? No, I don't. You, but you know? Sure. Maybe we should move on uh, after Kyle just compared uh, watermelon to the umbilical cord of. <gasps> That's right. I did. Uh, it's time to play a game because we haven't done that in forever forever that's right and now that we've we've you've been stuck in this uh this podcast universe eating an advent calendar of cheez its and we haven't played a game in in such a long time it's i know Mm -hmm. we're we're a little bit rusty uh but i'm very excited to play a round of pop tart or not I get my pop tarts from the store, yeah. For breakfast. Those pastries wrapped up in the foil. That's breakfast. I don't put them into the toaster. Don't charge it. I only eat them if they're frosted. Yeah, that's it. And I say, oh, oh. you're ready to play a game. It's not the kind of game you win. I wanna wrap another toaster pastry, never eat just one. Whoa. And I say, oh, there's tons of flavored tarts. Is it pop tart or not? You'll be guessing right until the end I get my pop 
from the store yet. For breakfast. Those pastries wrapped up in the foil. That's breakfast. I don't put them into the toaster. Don't judge it. I only eat them if they're frosted. Yeah, that's it. That's right. It's time to play a round of Pop Tart or not. Now, listener, please realize that Kyle has been waiting to show me this song for like three, three or four years. Weeks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yep. Somehow I, I got on that Justin Bieber train and I was able to to find out what his his latest single was going to be. Billboard top charts years before it happens. And uh, just been sitting on it. I like that you call it Billboard Top Charts. Like, you know. <laughs> like it's Billboard Pop Tarts or something. <laughs> the the Pop Tart Chop Chop Tarts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Pop Tart Top Chart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to name a Pop Tart flavor, and you will need to guess if it is a Pop Tart flavor or not. An actual real life has been distributed to human beings Pop Tart flavor or not. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I feel I feel confident about this. Okay. I like Pop Tarts. All right. All well, right. actually, before before we move any further, what's your favorite Pop Tart? Ooh. Variety. <sighs> Flavor. S'mores. Thousand percent s'mores. Oh man. That, that is the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good. We're good. That's that's all we needed. Now, wait, toasted or raw? Oh my gosh. <laughs> didn't you didn't you hear the song? I don't. I just like saying that pop tarts are raw. That's such I, a weird thing to say. I don't. I it, <clears throat> as the lyrics go, I don't put him in the toaster. Don't judge it. So raw. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Weirdo. What? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, maple bacon, pop tart or oh. not. Pop tart. That is correct. Yeah. I don't know what it was about like eight years ago, but there was a maple bacon surge everywhere. Maple bacon, maple bacon, maple bacon, maple bacon, maple bacon, everywhere. I think you need to try it. I'm sure they still make them, but. On eBay. Probably, probably eBay. Yeah, they're probably still good. All right. Number two, A&W root beer, pop tart or not. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm going to base this on the fact that I remember seeing a crush flavored pop tart so if they have an orange soda pop tart i'm sure they have an a and w pop tart too so i'm gonna say pop tart that is correct i hope that crush wasn't one of your questions because i already got you it absolutely spoiled it number three <laughs> chocolate covered banana pop tart or not Ooh, that sounds that sounds like kyle's perfect flavor now, when I say that it's Kyle's perfect flavor, he already spoiled it by telling me s'mores was his favorite flavor, which means that the chocolate banana is not a Pop-Tart. I'm going to turn off my camera because I don't want to spoil <laughs> this. You're looking You're looking at me. I'm not looking at anything. I promise you. I'm not trying to read you. Mm, <laughs> I'm just looking at your, your mug here. <laughs> Number four. Chocolate chip cookie dough, Pop Tart or not? Wow, chocolate chip cookie dough, Pop Tart. That's so, so much. That's so much. There's so much uh, uh, levels to that. Um, that one you have you to put- eat raw. It only. It only is is <laughs> yeah, raw. If you, if you it's if just you toast this Pop Tart, you're gonna have chocolate chip cookie. It's Pop-Tart. just when you crack it open, it's egg whites. They just run out of the <laughs> run out of the Pop Tart. <laughs> Oh, you're killing me over here. Uh, I'm going to say not a Pop-Tart. Mm. Wow. It I can't is believe that. indeed a Pop-Tart. I can't believe that. Mm-mm. That's ridiculous. How, how, wait, hold on. The pocket on those Pop-Tarts must be massive. The cookie dough portion, I'll, I'll send you a photograph of this uh, in the mail, okay. but the, <laughs> <laughs> the cookie dough portion is both the frosting and the material that the Pop-Tart is made of. So it's kind of. Well, so they like spread it. Yeah. Like on, cookie dough on t- spread. On top, kind of. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awful. Not great. I do not like that. Yeah, not great. Number five, chicken and waffles. Pop-Tart or not? Oh, boy. That would be my favorite flavor. But I've never had it. But is that because it's not real or because I'm not 
pop tart cultured uh, not not a pop tart oh that is boy, that is you. correct i love that my video's not off you have no clue if i if you're right or not this is so good <laughs> your eyes are so white ah, i know he's gonna get it I'm he's not good. gonna get it ah. number six mountain dew pop tart or not well i kind of i kind of uh already suspected that because there was an orange soda there could be a root beer pop tart but would they go far enough to include mountain dew into this collection of soda pop tarts soda pop tarts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no not a not a pop tart mountain dew no that no. is correct I, now if it was baja blast <laughs> would you, it's beans inside but baja blast frosting <laughs> Why is it beans? <laughs> corn, corn pop tart, be- beans on fire sauce on the inside. Bob, Bob last frosting. <laughs> oh, that's awful! It, it, it is awful. Except a corn, a corn pop tart would be corn pops in your pop tart. Corn, corn, corn pop tart. Yeah, got it. Yep. That's that is correct. Uh, the next one, number seven, is Orange Crush. Go ahead and give me your final answer, Regis. That is a pop tart. That I, is, sorry, that is that is correct. Yes, no. I have a weird I have a weird visual memory of seeing a Crush uh, flavored pop tart in Target, and I believe I sent you a photo of it. Like, like I have a weird likely, memory. Of this. Yes, I. That sounds that sounds about right. That sounds about right. All right, yeah. number eight. Everything bagel, pop tart or not? Wow, that sounds like too good of an idea, right? Like the 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 makers of the pop tart flavors is same same guys that do all the Oreos, but they're you know something that they would be such a perfect breakfast item, like chicken and waffles and an everything bagel. But I don't think that they're gonna pull the trigger on it because what kid wants to eat an everything bagel pop tart? So I'm going to say not a pop tart. Mm, that is correct. I mean, th- there might be there might be kids out there who love everything bagels. I was not one of them, so that would not th- those pop tarts would not fly off the shelves. Do you think is the is it cream cheese inside? What's inside? Oh my god! No, you don't put cream cheese in the inside. It's both inside. The inside and on is top. a pocket of all the seeds. Seeds. It's in just the- a bunch of seeds in the pop. Tart. Okay. All right. And then it's cream cheese frosting. Okay. All right. I like that. <laughs> uh, next one. Number number nine. <clears throat> pink lemonade. Pop tart or not. Wow. Pink lemonade. I feel like that's definitely got to be a flavor because it's uh, another another uh, comparison could be like the Baskin Robbins flavor uh, collection where they have the wildest neon ice cream flavors yeah let's say pop tart mm, that is Pink correct lemonade though what would that taste like toasted i know you're i know you're a pop tart raw kind of guy but mm-hmm. toasted pink lemonade like hot oh, hot lemonade that tastes- that's just vomit. It's, it's vomit. It's, it's just throw up. Hot lemonade. Yep. That's it's it's the vomit flavored Harry Potter jelly bean. I, I yeah probably probably <laughs> maybe maybe you'll like this one instead. Number ten, Twinkie, Pop Tart or not? I thought you were gonna say the Harry Potter vomit jelly bean flavor. <laughs> um, uh, it would just Twinkie. be Twinkie. It'd be earwax in the yeah, pocket so- of the. Mm, just mm. gross uh so twinkie is a hostess creation and pop tart is not a hostess creation and what a weird crossover that would be but like almost too good but still good enough ah i'm flip-flopping i i want to say yes but my brain tells me no but my heart tells me yes so let's say pop tart Dang it, my brain is smarter than my heart. It would be the biggest collab in history. It would be, man. A a Twinkie. I was thinking maybe Peeps as another option. Oh, my. 
just melt a peep and spread it on the top of a pop tart. I can do that myself. True. Yep. <laughs> that is true. Next up. Lemon poppy seed pop tart or not. No, uh, uh-uh. I'm, I'm vetoing. I, if I'm going to go down to the pop tart headquarters and tell them don't possibly make a lemon poppy seed pop tart, not a pop tart. Thank goodness. That is correct. I really didn't want to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on down. It's fine. Take it up with, uh, take it up with the pop tart folks. Uh, second to last one this is okay. coming up here on the end. Bubble gum. Pop tart or not. Gum. This is this is another like Baskin Robbins realm Pop Tart flavor. Bubble gum. Ugh. Bubble gum in my Pop Tart. But kids would love it. Ugh. It'd be Don't blue. It'd be blue. Yep. <clears throat> no, that is incorrect. Thank it is goodness. not a Pop Tart. Oh, not a Pop Tart. I'm glad. I'm glad I got that one wrong. I'm glad that I'm glad that my intuition would have told me. Sure, kids might be dumb enough to eat a bubblegum pop tart, but then the reality is that no, kids would not be dumb enough to eat that. And I have a little bit more faith in kids society now. Last one. Jolly Rancher watermelon. Pop tart or oh, not. That's the collab. Jolly Rancher pop tart. But watermelon's like the worst Jolly Rancher flavor. No, not a Pop Tart. Mm. No, who that likes is, watermelon? That is in, that is incorrect. Do I have to slap that one? Yes, the Pop Tart itself. <laughs> yes, I suppose I can and turn if it's on. Hollow, can it's hollow. Turn on my good. video now. Yeah. Um, if the stem of the Pop Tart is uh, still green. Oh, gross. <laughs> then because it's raw, you should put you should put it back. Yeah, oh, that's gross. Uh, that's definitely what you should do. Um, that's a whole that's a whole ding dang episode. Wow. We're back. Yeah. It's, um, it's doing quite well, I would say, uh, but we're still trapped here. So be sure to listen to this. Um and only, only with multiple listens will you free us from this horrific nightmare that we've been trapped in. For you're, the real, last, you're really selling it, For the last 428 days. And uh, that's the only way. It's the only way that we will be able to uh, make it back out of this podcast and into your ear holes again later on this week for two episodes per week right now that we're committing to for the moment you're nodding profusely i'm hopeful that we can stick to it but that's about all i've got uh, you can that's kyle find... that's kyle's first wish i'm gonna grant it we changed we changed the whole ding dang url since the last time we did this uh good stuff dot network slash morning show there you that's go. the new one. Do not go to the other one. I recommend not putting. We won't that. even mention it. Don't just not. It's just gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's delete gone. all of your good just, stuff bookmarks and create new ones. All the all of them. All the. All, I know you bookmark every single episode. You got to get rid of them. You really need to <laughs> just purge it. Get it out of there. Don't think about it. You can also go to Patreon.com/slash/GoodStuff. That's where you give us money, and you can get access to. All the all the stuff that happens before the show, extra and bits after the show. Until next time, bye. Uh, good morning, everybody.